Welcome to Trading Nation. We're joined by David Rosenberg, Chief Economist at Strategist at Gluskin Chef. Uh, David, it's good to chat with you again. Listen, we continue to see this weird trend where the stock market seems to be saying one thing, but the bond market seems to be saying another. How do you read it and what, it, what is going on, particularly in bonds, that we're still yielding so low? Well, I, I think that uh, we, we all have to make up our minds as to which of these two asset classes uh, you know, has the right story. It almost reminds me of that period uh, in, uh, you know, in the fall of 2007 uh, when the stock market was putting in a classic uh, double top and everybody thought that uh, we were going to have uh, the longest cycle on record and the bond market was telling you a different story altogether. So uh, we're really back to that sort of dichotomy because uh, here we have the stock markets just ripping today uh, and uh, the long bond, I mean, you would think that if we actually had a true reflation growth story uh, that the long bond uh, of anything would do more than just being up one basis point. But you know, on top of that, you know, are we seeing the U.S. dollar uh, rally substantially alongside the stock market? No. Uh, surely if we had some big uh, pro-reflation theme, it would show up in the currency market as well. And the CRB index uh, is down, I think, about a percent so far today. So I, I think that if you're taking a look at who is the odd man out here, uh, it seems to be the, the stock market action that we're seeing. Yeah, it's just been a really, really interesting move, particularly with the Federal Reserve and Janet Yellen making a little more hawkish maybe tone than, than some had thought in the, in the meeting last week. Uh, at some point, do you see the, I don't want to say the bond vigilantes, but the bond market making some kind of a realistic shift? Well, it depends uh, on, on, on which direction uh, that realism is going to take hold because, I mean, let's take a look at what's happening. Uh, we have had a set of uh, consumer price numbers now uh, that are showing uh, intensifying disinflation momentum uh, and that's even before this latest foray that we're going to be seeing on top of a telecom price war, a drug price war, and now a food price war. Uh, but most of the components of the CPI and the PC deflator are actually disinflating right now uh, and the economic growth numbers don't seem to be doing too well either. You know, I, I was taking a look, for example, just over the course of the past month, uh, out of the 16 major economic indicators, only one has managed to come in above expectations. Uh, three have come in line, uh, and the others have all come in disappointing. Uh, it looks to me as though second quarter GDP growth, everybody was talking about we're going to get this big bounce back because, of course, the first quarter was all about seasonal maladjustment. I don't think you get a number much above 2%, 2.5% second quarter, and third quarter looks like it's down below 2%. So I think the bond market is just basically responding to an economy uh, that isn't really showing a whole lot of verve, if anything, disappointing, yeah. and inflation data that's coming in on the low side. So I don't think the bond market's telling you an inconsistent story here. I think if you believe what the stock market's telling you, the stock market is telling you that we're going to have a pickup in growth, reacceleration alongside pricing power throughout most of the economy. And I think that really is going to be uh, the part of the story that has uh, got a, a low odds uh, scenario attached to it as far as I'm concerned. Can we make more money overseas? Well, I think that's been the case this year. You know, uh, I mean, very, you know, we're all focused on the FANG stocks. <laughs> and yet, very quietly, the German DAX, I think in U.S. dollar terms, is up uh, roughly 16% so far this year. That, to me, if you're looking at a great reflation trade, uh, Germany seems to be one. And I think that, in general, uh, this Macron victory in France, uh, in so far he's got, he's got this sweeping uh, majority in the National Assembly. Uh, if he can actually get through, and that's the caveat, a lot of these changes, whether it's pensions or labor uh, market reform, remember the last socialist that was able to, you know, put on market clothing was Gerhard Schroeder about 15 years ago in Germany. Uh, you know, if, if we could see France finally embark on structural reforms, that does two things. Uh, it raises the growth profile of the region's second largest economy, but also gives Angela Merkel a real partner uh, to finally engage in a lot of the other reforms, whether it's a common bond market, uh, common fiscal policy, pan-European deposit insurance. What you can start finding over time is that the cost of capital in Europe uh, on a relative basis starts to come down and, and you get a, a, a more durable uh, re-rating of their stock market and their currency you know, beyond just the cyclical tailwinds that we're seeing right now, but something more structural. So to answer your question, actually, for the first time in a long time, and I've been saying this for the past several months, Europe is looking very, very interesting to me. 
Well, we're going to be watching Europe as well. Uh, David Rosenberg, always a pleasure to get your time and your insights. We are watching the bond market too. Thanks very much, David. Pleasure. Take care. And folks, thank you as always for tuning in. I'm Brian Sullivan. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.